Hey, real quick guys, I just wanted you to see, make sure that that copper washer is sitting up inside that recessed groove of the, uh, the camshaft, you know, before that guy goes on there. You know, you wouldn't want that thing sitting off. I thought I'd show you guys another quick trick. <clears throat> so, you know, right now I'm uh, torquing my intake sprockets, and a lot of times, you know, it's a real pain in the ass because it's like we got 76 uh, foot pounds, we got 90 foot pounds on this guy. Um, you know, and uh, one of the tricks that I use is, is it's, I just use a lot of different techniques to do stuff. But something like this, I would put my torque wrench in this position, add my other wrench like this and I'd be going ahead pulling pressure back on this and then see the position that I'm in I have basically like maximum leverage to get that and you just want to be like super slow and controlled another thing too you see I'm not wearing gloves right now that's because I'm a fucking idiot you should be wearing gloves to do this because this will guillotine your fingers for sure if you miss All right, I feel like this is a, a trick that a lot of guys probably need. <clears throat> so, you can see I already did the the, uh, the rear cover, you know, the gallery gaskets and all that. So I got, you know, water pump, uh, primary hydraulic tensioner. Uh, so, um, you know, I feel like this is the, you know, obviously, you know, these guys are a pain in the ass, but I feel like this is a, a thing where guys run into a little bit of problems. So, um, you can see how I have it now. You know, I've, I've slipped this uh, this uh, uh, crank sprocket on. I've got everything sitting in its guides. I don't have my upper guide and I don't have my primary. So what I'm gonna do is, when it's in this position, I mind you, you may have to walk the crank back or, you know, forward, you know, plus or minus 10, 15 degrees or what have you to get what you want to get chain slack in or out of it. So. I make sure that I'm on this dude and I go ahead and put a little tension right there and then I'm just going to slide this primary guide up into place. Okay. So I get that dude into place. And then a little bit of movement back and forth, make sure it's good. Okay, so now. Oh, ha. Spooky. All right. Okay, so now you want to do and then of course have your uh, your 10 millimeter handy and what you're going to do is you're just going to put some tension on the chain and kind of push this dude down like this and just go ahead and uh, while you're applying tension you're going to thread that in there Should give it a little wibble wobble, and then uh, keep in mind, you know, these these chain systems are noisy as shit. And the reason is, is because look at this. Every one of these components, this is, this is all brand new stuff. Look at I can move this thing around like crazy. So, you know, just keep in mind if you bring if, uh, build a brand new engine, you're like, oh, this man, this thing's noisy. It's like, hey, it's forged internals. Um, that's gonna be noisy as fuck. Uh, and then B, you know, you it was a very sloppy. Uh, timing system in my opinion but hey I guess you know it works it works whatever you know Ford does shit or used to do shit like that so make sure that's good and then of course you know after you do this you know you're gonna um, want to make sure that you do in my opinion I see like guys this is where you go wrong they make multiple 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 rotations out of the engine you know and thinking that it's gonna if every one of these color uh, dot indications is on and it's it's mechanically phased so don't worry about it, it you just need to do maybe one or two full rotations and uh, just to make sure everything's lined back up looking good everything is smoothly running on your guides the reason I say that is because 
you know, you keep rotating that motor, you're going to chew up those liners without any type of lubrication. So, you know, you're going to have also all sorts of excessive cylinder liner wear before you even start the engine. So, uh, me personally, I do a one a single 360 degree rotation after I'm timed, and uh, that's it, man. I'm over it, you know. So, just things to think about. Uh, next thing we're going to do is the uh, uh, front cover, um, and then. Keep in mind you got to put in your brand new uh, O-ring seals for the gallery plate uh, that supply oil to the uh, VTC cover uh, system which basically then supplies oil to the uh, solenoid actuators and then supplies oil to the uh, mechanical uh, hydraulic crucible mechanism that's inside these things that you know advances or retards the intake cam. So. Um, think if there's anything you know make sure you break clean off this entire mating surface really really well this dude too these guys this down here uh, and uh, you know you do not want to have any kind of a leak in your timing chain so, uh, timing case so all right just a little update where we're at Everything's all put together, and I'm about to install the front cover. So, nothing special about this. It's all silicone sealing all throughout, everywhere you took it off already. Uh, the only thing that you might want to know, uh, easy trick for uh, changing out this uh, front uh, main is uh, you just use a flat hammer right there. Or I'm sorry, a, a flat screwdriver. Hit it with a hammer and knock it out. And then to install, um, see how I pack mine with grease okay so a very light amount of grease on the outside of this guy right there and then pack the inside channel of it completely and then you're gonna use a, uh, a soft face hammer and you're just gonna hold it down with your index and your thumb and then just start kind of working it slowly while pushing tension on this and it'll easily seat in there perfect. I see guys over there trying to use sockets and crazy stuff, and it's like, dude, this is all rubber hammer work. It's technique. Same thing for the rear main seal. It's just a, a larger diameter seal, so something to think about. All right, got the uh, front cover on. Nothing particularly notable about this, except for um, you want to do a light coating of Vaseline on the uh, the triple dynamic seals inside the VTC cover and gently slide that on there. And then uh, just always remember uh, this power steering bracket, <laughs> you see how it goes? That comes off first before this. So. But yeah, that's where we're at. And then uh, the next thing we're going to do is the uh, the VVEL uh, motor control. And uh, I'm going to remind myself to do some knock sensor work. All right, so you can see I've kind of got the motor flipped over now, and I just wanted to address a couple things. So there's the uh, modified windage tray that we talked about. You can see the sheen on it a little bit right there. Just a very light coat of motor oil. You don't want this thing to rust while it's in car. You know, I mean, you know, like even this guy. This guy's like a Nissan tech. It's he's still gonna take him, you know, three weeks or so after work putting this whole thing together. It's a big single turbo car. So make sure you put some uh, some extra lubrication on that windage tray so it doesn't rust inside the oil pan because it absolutely will. Don't forget um, your two uh, primary uh, oil pressure passages. Uh, the O-rings for those, I install them dry. Um, and make sure you cut off any excess silicon sealant. And then, uh, you know, it's basically time to mount your uh, oil pan.